Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today, today I have a special guest with me, Rahul Agarwal. Introducing Rahul, Rahul is a IIT Delhi graduate. He has worked in companies like uh, City, Walmart, Meta, and currently he is working for Roku and he is based out of London. Uh, some special things about Rahul. Rahul has uh, 14k plus subscribers in Medium where he writes as ML Viz. And also he has around 30k subscribers in LinkedIn. So welcome, welcome Rahul to the channel. Hi Abhishek, uh, it's good to be here. Sure. So Rahul, uh, you have a lot of experience. We'll talk about many things, but first tell us how you got started into data science. Um, so for me, the journey has been a little bit, I can say, not sorted out, right? So I was a mechanical engineer and uh, then I uh, got into a steel firm, a steel industry firm, Spath Industries, and there I didn't like uh, the work, right? So it was all about uh, iron iron production and something, right? So I was always a five pointer, six pointer in my IIT Delhi days as well. And uh, when you think about you know uh, getting a degree, right? In India, it's always like you never know what you want to do in future. It's more about uh, what your parents say you normally do. So that happened with me as well. And uh, so I did mechanical engineering, didn't like it at all. And uh, uh, once I got into the steel industry job, then I realized that it's not for me. And uh, then I moved to business analyst, uh, analyst uh, role uh, in Cartesian Consulting. After that, I moved on to a business analyst role in Fractal. Most of the work over there was uh, around writing SQL. Uh, I liked the work a little bit, but again, it was not my proper introduction to data science as of yet because uh, it was just writing SQL and presenting some reports and some dashboards. Uh, I would say the main uh, point where I started in data science would be when I was working as a business analyst again in my city way and uh, my manager actually asked me, uh, like there is something called as linear regression or uh, I think it was random forest. There is something called as random forest and people are talking about it. Uh, can you try it out? And I, uh, for one, had never coded before. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was a little bit, I I could say scared about it. Uh, it was 2013, like 10 years back. I uh, hadn't coded uh, like all my life. Uh, but yeah, like I started doing something, found a blog post, and uh, there just saw some code, tried to uh, try to run it. Yeah, uh, and it ran. And I was like, oh, uh, this is great, right? And uh, then, yeah, like uh, it's always like that, right? You try out something and uh, it works and uh, you are like, oh, how is it working? And then what I tried was, I tried to understand what is the, why is it working, right? And then, I would say was the start of my data science life. So I went through a few courses uh, from Andrew MG, NG machine learning course and all of those, right? And uh, then I went through some courses on statistics, went through some courses on maths. And yeah, like that was the start. And once I started, I really liked it. And uh, yeah, like after that, it was just like moving along, right? Just uh, reading run, uh, and learning. For me, it was the start. Yeah, Raul, it's very motivating for all the listeners because you started with something very different and today you are one of the most followed writers and you're the most, one of the most sorted data scientists out there. So it's really great that you've achieved in from where you, but from where you started to now. So I would not say I am the most sorted data scientist because there are so many people I feel are better than me, but it's always about, uh, you know, learning all the time. Right. And people there are so great uh so so many people who are better than you but still you have to keep on learning and trying to improve bit by bit and that's what i have been doing for the past 10 years i would say uh, sometimes you will see that the flow has uh flow would you know falter a bit right and you would not be able to learn for let's say quite some period of time but it should not stop you from continuing whenever you can so that is what has helped me at least Definitely. Everyone should have that eager to learn. And also our field is one that keeps changing every day. Yeah. So we have to continuously learn. Uh, so I do lo love that. Honestly, that is one of the reasons that I love data science, that uh, it changes quite a lot. 
sometimes it becomes harder to keep track of all the things that are happening like llms and all mm. of the things that are happening right now it is becoming you know mm. harder day by day uh, to keep track of it mm. but still i love it because mm. otherwise i will get bored uh, i mm. i know myself mm. uh, if i start doing something that is not evolving mm. i think i will get so completely agree so rahul uh, talking more about learning uh, you have a profile if we go, if we see your blogs and all you have written post about lot of topics it's not specialized to one domain but you have written lot of things about varied topics so how do you learn a new concept and how you like uh, try it and how you write about it like how how does that the process works for you so like i i am not writing a lot as of now because i am not getting the time but when i was writing uh, i used to compartmentalize right so uh, by compartmentalizing i mean i was working on something in my daily job and i was trying out some things in my uh, in my uh, outside of uh, outside hours of daily job and whatever i was doing on in my outside hours i tried to uh, you know just log it right so for me blogging started as logging right uh, whatever i was trying i just wanted to have a log of it uh, so that i could go back to it whenever i was uh, whenever i uh, felt like it right so blogging started as like that and with time it improved and uh, like i if you see my first or second blog i would say uh, you will feel like oh this is just like a, a bunch of code just written and you will be like oh why is this guy uh, just writing code oh, and uh, just posting it but yeah like that was the start and uh, i think everyone gets the start from there uh, so for me uh, i used to go back to these blogs or you can call as logs a lot of time and then i started improving on it uh, i got some editorials uh, some editors actually helped me in improving my stuff and all of those things and uh, i started with uh, talking about compartmentalization so i was always trying to learn whatever i was not learning on my daily job and that's where i was writing the blogs but that doesn't mean that whatever i was learning on my daily job i was not writing blogs about so that way i was able to uh, you know try out a lot of a uh, lot of other things like people normally would write about what they are working on in their daily jobs for me it was more like i am writing about what i was working on my daily job as well as i was writing about what i was learning all the time so that's how i feel uh, i was able to write on such diverse topics and yeah like that is yeah i i think that's the answer for that sure that's that's very interesting and we have to do that because our field is so dynamic there are so many concepts like we won't be able to always work in deep learning or maybe uh, just uh, traditional ml but if we keep on learning either through work or through uh, off time then it definitely helps exactly exactly like uh, again you just hit the stone on the head right so it's more about uh, i wanted to try out deep learning i was not getting an option in my daily job mm-hmm. so i started uh, researching on it in my free time and then when uh, like i was writing blogs or whatever right and uh, then i got some option of trying that out in my daily job and it was easier for me right so it's always hmm. it whatever you learn you will hmm. keep it on never gets wasted you know, applying it everywhere right yeah. so yeah yeah so so it happened with me in my work i am working on classical ml but out of interest i am also doing llm in my off time now whatever llm things comes i am the go to person i have become like one of the go to person so whatever you have learned it never gets wasted and somehow in your work also some concept from it you will be able to apply later exactly and uh, you never know what concept you would be applying at what point of time so i wrote some post on mcmc methods like i guess seven years back eight years back i don't remember and now i am applying it for some uh, some work in my uh, company so it's just like n- nothing goes to waste honestly so <laughs> oh, completely agree and rahul you are one of the reasons i got started with blogging and now i have moved to blogging as well but again I, it's it's a balance now i am trying to find between blogging and blogging <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so for me i uh, never got into blogging uh, because i am a camera shy person uh, in all senses but yeah like uh, for blogging it uh, makes a lot of sense to me because uh, you can write uh, you can 
uh, structure your th thoughts better uh, when it comes to blogging. I think in blogging also, you can structure your thoughts better. But again, I think it takes a lot of time for me at least. Uh, so uh, it depends on the person to uh, person, Definitely. right? Uh, so for you, I think it, it's working better. So it's great to see. And, and I will come talking about the work life. Uh, what are the different domains you have worked upon? across different companies just if you can give a brief to the audience so i have actually worked upon a lot of domains i would say i have worked uh, in the finance uh, domain city bank uh, then i have worked in the retail domain with uh, walmart i have worked uh, in social uh, um, social domain with facebook i have uh, working right now in the media domain with roku uh, before that i was working in a startup which was a app right mobile app so uh, I think I have uh, tried out a lot of things and I have, uh, you know, tried out a lot of different domains as such. And uh, when it comes to uh, projects, right? So each of the companies had uh, different sort of projects. And uh, honestly, if you think about it, the domain might change a lot, but the techniques actually are exactly the same. So I was uh, working on classification model at some point of time. I was working on graph algorithms at, at some point of time. I was working. Uh, I was working on you know deep learning at some point of time, computer vision and NLP at some point of time. But yeah, like I think uh, all of that them are correlated in some way because they all start from logistic regression. So <laughs> I would say completely yeah. agree. So and and any uh, so I got from your point that you like more problem solving than like it doesn't matter which domain. But is that the thing that you have? you like solving problems from a particular domain more than other domain or it's more just about problem solving uh i think it's more about problem solving and uh, i think uh, it also depends on the domain as well because in yes. some uh, some domains you are restricted in the way that you solve the problems right I and uh, i'll come to finance right obviously so you cannot use some features in finance uh, you cannot uh, use some models in finance mm -hmm. uh, you cannot use black box models in finance for me yeah that's that's a little uh, little bit hard for me to digest right if you can get better accuracy you should go for better accuracy but again i understand their point as well because it's all about regulation and if we start up doing that and there could be some sort of discrimination and biases happening all over the places so yeah like i will say that that is why i normally don't like finance as a domain but yeah like it also has its challenges so uh, at least in city, I can tell you. So we were not uh, allowed to, you know, like every version of uh, software that you use, like NumPy, uh, Pandas, all of those uh, softwares were vetted before they were actually installed in your uh, Python environment. And when I started uh, working in city in 2016, uh, I wanted to do some things and uh, they were using a NumPy version that was like five years behind. And whatever i had to do uh, i had to write custom functions for it so mm -hmm. i could not use pandas data frame i had to write everything in dictionaries and lists and mm -hmm. you know thing was uh, so difficult that could have been done in uh, two or three lines in pandas i had to write it all over again so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah those are the things that uh, are and there i think uh, now it, it would have become more difficult because nowadays for me, I focus more on logic. And once I have the logic, I just ask chat GPT or GitHub Copilot to write that code for me. But if I am not, if I am not allowed access to those tools and I am doing the manual code or code coding, then I feel, I, I feel that time has come where coding should not be the main focus, but problem solving should be the more focus. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, even right now, I don't think banks would be allowing uh, any access to chat GPTs or mm -hmm. uh, GPT software. Mm -hmm. either uh they are inbuilt and when they are inbuilt they will have so many restrictions over them so mm -hmm. sure. can't you there <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, moving to the next topic rahul uh you have written a lot of blogs and you keep on learning you talked about that and and i know uh, being a content creator it's not easy to write just a blog you have to first do the research do the hard work understand the concept and then write about it so and uh, this all needs time how do you do time management from work between work these things family everything it's pretty hard honestly uh normally what i try to do is i would uh, get up from work at around seven and then maybe i'll watch some series or tv series or whatever and then 
I'll give it, I will try to give at least one hour or uh, one and a half hour every day so that uh, I am reading in that time. I am trying to learn something in that time. And uh, if that will be the research, right? So Monday to Thursday, it will be some research or some reading through different blogs, some uh, some videos, uh, some YouTube videos, channels, or some Coursera courses or something like that. So I'll just uh, keep on uh, accumulating the knowledge over the weekend. I'll try to put some time to write it. So for me, uh, since I have written so many blogs, writing comes very naturally, right? So writing doesn't take a lot of time. It's more about uh, just getting the concept in your head and trying to explain it in a better way so that everyone can learn with me. That's the harder part, right? So interesting. I would say mostly just try to give, I try to give like 30 to one hour, 30 minutes to one hour every day so that, you know, uh, I can, I can be prepared to write a blog uh, on the. It's very interesting and something to learn from. Even if you are giving 30 to one, 30 minutes to one hour to learning every day, a lot of things can move. Exactly. Uh, and so uh, at one point of time, uh, I was writing a lot of blogs because uh, I had some time. I had some time at hand as well as I was uh, just writing whatever I was learning uh, on my daily job as well. So that is the best combination where you can write whatever you are working in your daily job. And uh, that works uh, well for the audience as well. So then i had this small thing where i was uh i had made it a point to write at least 500 words a day right so i will just start my, start up my medium screen and i'll just write uh, 500 words a day and then i was not able to stop so there you never stop writing uh, after writing 500 uh, day uh, words a day you just keep on going and uh, it used to be like 1000 1200 and it used to be very close to a proper blog and then i used to continue the next day so having a small habit like either you can have 500 uh, words a day or just having like 30 minutes a day for learning or one hour a day for learning accumulates and everything uh, accumulates and uh, you can you can write a lot of blogs or you can uh, learn a lot of things like that definitely agree and Rahul, now you are based out of london uh previously you were working out of india so what's the difference you find with uh, working abroad versus working in India? Uh, I would like to know your pointers, but also two things I would like you to focus upon, like after your points, uh, that does that international exposure helps? And secondly, is time management dif- di- uh, difficult or easier abroad versus uh, India for writing or, or any other things that you want to do outside of work? Okay. Uh... So the difference, I think, again, is uh, the connections you make, uh, you make international connections, you, uh, your whole circle increases by quite a lot. Previously, you just had the Indian based circle. And now you have a global uh, based of uh, circle, global based circle, you unlearn some biases you had uh, towards the global population, you learn new things about them. Uh, apart from that, I think uh, with the way that technology is going and the way uh, the Indian service industry is working, I don't see that work-wise there is a lot of difference, right? So both of us, like even in UK or in India, I would not say the quality of work is, you know, any better or worse. It's pretty much the same, right? And uh the first question you asked, uh, can you just repeat that again? Like, uh, what was the thing Does that you that international exposure helps? And is, is the time management different, difficult there versus or here? So, obviously, it, um, the international exposure helps a uh, bit because you obviously remove some biases and everything. So, I just talked about it, I think, uh, the first point. Uh, the second point is, uh, like, how do you time manage? So, the time management... Uh, is a little bit different over here. Uh, you don't have a maid, you don't have a whatever, right? So everything that you have to do, you have to do on your own. And uh, that is one thing uh, where you have to manage time and you have to be a lot more disciplined than you were in India. Like I was in India, I was not that much disciplined uh, here. I am becoming a little bit more disciplined because I know uh, time will go like that. Uh, there is no 
like you will always be strapped for time uh, over here uh, the second thing that i i noticed about uh, this global uh, work culture is that people are very motivated to leave the work at 7 mm. or 6 or whatever the work timings are so mm. they will not stop too much for lunches they will not stop too much for uh like they will have a desk based desk lunch right so they'll uh, get their lunch on desk and just keep on working and uh, just give all the time that they are hired for to the company and once that clock is over like the time finishes they'll just go to their home and uh, dedicate all the time either to their family or their external interests or whatever so that is one thing that was not uh, in india i would say uh there were a lot of breaks that you we used to take uh, mm-hmm. here it's not like that <laughs> so <laughs> breaks on the break thing. all sorts of breaks <laughs> exactly that that is not uh, something that i am uh, seeing in this particular culture mm-hmm. right and you must be saving a lot of time the commute time right or yes, i am working from home so i am saving a lot of commute time but again that that means that i start working at 9:30 and i get up at 7 so uh previously it might have been like i come at 9:30 i leave at 7 uh, i leave at 6 or 6:30 now the commute time is also included in your work timings right now mm, yes that happens but like you you can get away from that and rahul uh, what are the differences you uh, like you have worked in both startups and big companies what is the difference that you see working in mnc versus a startup so there are a lot of differences uh, when it comes to mnc versus startups one is you get a lot of responsibilities at a startup uh, that you don't uh, see at a mnc uh, you cannot uh, uh, in mnc you can work on something like a one year project or two year project and something that is that is going to bring profit long term in startups it's more about uh, like oh this has come you have to get it this done in like next 15 days and then move on to some other thing and yeah just keep on iterating so iteration helps a lot much uh, much more faster in a startup uh, the the way that uh, the ways of working are more organized in mnc compared to a startup so uh, in a startup it could be like you are given some project and uh, the next day uh, your manager would be like oh uh, we want something else and uh, everything changes uh, day to day while in mnc it there are reorgs uh, they happen in mncs as well but they don't ha- happen as often as a startup so that is uh, what i feel is the difference between mnc and startup from my point of view and yeah what do you think mm. you are also yeah so there are right? pros and cons and uh, i also feel the same there are pros and cons in an mnc you get time to solve a problem and also you get time for your own self or your own learning apart from work but i feel the type of person i am and even i feel the same for you we enjoy more in a startup where we are uh, we have to deliver fast and we get to like solve a problem move move away from it and solve the next problem so that like you have lot of problems just you can keep on moving from one to another so learning is more in a startup and uh, for me one more thing that matters the most is talent around me as you were also saying initially when i asked you that you are one of the most uh, followed writer you said there, there are many people better than me i like that kind of culture in the office where everyone is so talented that i can learn something from them so for me mnc startup definitely i like the pace in startup stability of a mnc but what matters more is the talent the talent that we the company has if the talent is good then i will stay in that company for longer true man true uh, and obviously talent or uh, and uh, the people that you are working with you get to spend a lot of time with them and learn a lot from them as well hmm. so it, it's just like uh, if your company is better than you it's always better definitely uh, rightly it should not be the best person in the room because otherwise uh, otherwise you will be the worst person <laughs> all the other <laughs> in the future <laughs> <laughs> and uh, rahul and i have also started a medium publication the algorithmic minds uh, catering to the latest ai ml data science algorithm all these type of topics uh, 
Rahul, I'm very soon I'm contributing to the <laughs> uh, publication. But uh, Rahul, please tell us more about this publication to the audience. Uh, so I just wanted to give a, a platform where people can actually contribute uh, whatever they are writing or whatever they are uh, learning in data science. And uh, for that, uh, me and Abhishek were talking about it, uh, how we can actually uh, help people start get started with writing and uh, get started with blogging. Uh, both of us have learned a lot uh, through our content creation journey. And uh, as we have gone along this content creation journey, we have learned a lot of, let's say, I would say editing stuff as well, apart from just the data science and ML stuff. So we just wanted to uh, provide a platform where people can actually just contribute their articles and uh, we can help them uh, with their content. Uh, so that is, uh, that is, that was a basic idea. And uh, yeah, like uh, uh, I would be looking forward for to a lot more uh you know contributions from the folks who watch this video sure and also we don't want to restrict any content saying that it's a duplicate content or there is already a lot of content about this topic we want to mm -hmm. give whatever we have learned over the years help them polish their content and we feel that every content will have something new to learn from so that is also our motivation to uh embrace the new talent and give them the right platform yeah uh, so Rahul, uh, what would be your advice to the people who are starting with data science at today's so, time? Yeah, like when I see uh, people who are starting uh, in today's time, it's it's honestly, I feel a little bit bad for them uh, because there are so many things uh, and uh, there is so much, so much noise around you that you would get lost in our time, um, like if you were learning joystick integration, it was great, right? Uh, right now, even if uh, you are like, I see people getting confused so much. Uh, like uh, I want to get into data science or data engineering or my machine learning or something or something like so many prompt engineering now, right? So I, I don't see uh, a straight path for everyone, but you have to ask yourself a question. What is that you are interested in so if you are more interested in maths stats and those other things i think you should be looking towards a data science uh you should be looking towards becoming a data scientist otherwise if you are more uh more programmed to you know code and you like coding a lot and you also like math and coding then machine learning is the path for you and that is so you have to ask yourself, what is it you want to pursue and what is the things that you think you are good at? So that is the first advice that I give. So the second uh, advice that I would like to give is don't worry about the latest things that are happening in technology as of right now. Uh, you have to start with basics and basics are what is going to get you the next job or the first job that you uh, want to have. Uh, so I see a lot of people who are, you know, uh, who start in machine learning by straight, uh, straightly trying to use LLMs, right? So they would be like, uh, I have built some application using an LLM and uh, I don't really understand anything apart from that, right? I could, I have just created this code and uh, now I don't know anything else. So for me, a person who is able to answer things about, uh, you know, logistic regression, p-values, and uh, confidence intervals is a much more better candidate to take rather than as a person who has just uh, copy pasted a code from somewhere and just uh, tried to run something, right? So you have to start from basics and those basics are the ones that you should improve upon to reach that level where you are starting using those uh, advanced concepts and uh, advanced things. So that is what I would advise. completely agree. Same advice I also give to the people who ask this question that start with the fundamentals. It, it may be linear regression, logistic regression, probabilities, some concept of statistics. And it's good to know about the latest stuff. Try that. But your fundamentals needs to be strong first before jumping into those. So even if uh, they start with uh, these LLMs or these uh, very advanced concepts, when the point will come uh, where they have to improve it or they have to use it in a different way, they will have to go to the basic 
to the papers and there will be so much math so much uh, so much of the fundamental data science concepts in the in there in that paper that they would not be able to understand it and that's where they will fail and a person who understands fundamentally what data science is would be able to excel uh, they would be able to read the paper they would be able to implement so implementation i think has become such a small thing right now that you can do it right you can ask chat gpt to do, to do it for you right so it's not it's not uh, the main thing that i am looking for i am most probably looking for a person who understands the basics so that they can improve on things rather than just uh, just copy pasting things so completely yeah. agree rahul rahul one final question before we wrap up um so you give advice to the people who might be starting with data science how to uh, how to go ahead with it what would be your what would be your advice for the working professional like us who are already working in the field but since the field is so dynamically changing how to keep oneself updated with the latest research and keep on learning so and how keep oneself updated what would be your suggestions for the working professionals um uh, so again i myself uh, face this and i myself uh, think that i am not able to catch a, catch up to everything really well uh, but the way that i uh, try to do this is there will be so many things that are happening in the data science and ai field all the time and there are going to be trends and there are going to be things that are going to stay right so whenever a new thing happens i am not the first person to read about it never so when this uh, llms came and uh, this chat gpt thing happened i was not properly following it right at that point of time i just wanted to see how this thing is evolving so that so that and i was learning something else in that time right not particularly about chat gpts but now i know that these things are here to stay it makes sense to actually put uh, your mind to it put some time to it and uh, try to learn it uh, because this is this is something that is not a trend now this is something that is going to stay so i try to divide things into trends versus uh, versus things that are going to stay so that is how i am tr i try to keep myself updated and uh, yeah like you cannot be read all the time so there is something called as quantum computing that is uh, that is i was reading some articles i was uh, seeing some places where uh, where people were talking about it uh, i would not put much effort into it until i see someone trying it out and uh, you know someone uh, someone really doing something great with it and once they do it and i see that it's something that we all are going to use then i will put some time put out some time to work on it learn it and uh, try to use it in my projects and yeah, yeah see how it works and then trying to go into the theory behind it so for me it's always like i would try to practically experience something right uh, even if i am uh, i was running random forest for the first thing uh, first thing in my life i try to practically experience it see it's working in a way that is not evident to me and then get back into the theory and maths behind it so that i am able to understand everything about it so uh, i work in a little bit of backwards way i would say but i think it's all about the way that people like to learn i know a lot of people and i, I think you know who am i talking about who would uh, first go from theory and then to then to the models for me it's a opposite way so yeah very it's it's a very valid suggestion and, and i think it's a very good way to filter out the noise and focus on the things that are actually valuable and yep. things as you said are uh, there to stay exactly uh, rahul any final message for the data track viewers mm, i don't have any message as such but uh, again it depends on the audience that you are ha you have and uh, you are doing something great and uh, i would uh, uh, i think abhishek uh, would keep on doing it and uh, i normally watch some uh, videos from abhishek time to time to get to learn about llms and stuff so uh, just keep watching uh, this channel and uh, just try, uh, just keep uh, reading my blogs as well definitely and also keep writing for algorithmic minds and keep reading algorithmic algorithmic minds medium publication as well yeah sure thank you thank you rahul for your time bye
Thanks, Abhishek. And great talking to you. See ya. Bye.